What are your favorite stock picks for the year? My stock pick? Yeah. What should people invest in? Mm. Well, there's, they always invest in anything. Yeah. Well, people do what they had to do and they do it. If they, <laughs> that's a good point. What, uh, so should they invest in any particular companies? Any, any, oh, what's your, I, what's in your stock portfolio you know, right now? My stock? Yeah. It's building a company. That's what it is. That's make people making money. Yeah. So if you, if they just build the office, right? Don't even invest in a stock. No, you can put it in stock, but people, long people, as long as people making their money, yeah. Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So before I start, first kill graphic novel. Link is in the description. Yesterday, Clownfish had a video where Neon um, he used ChatGPT and he asked it to write. A different version of the Star Wars sequels so Force Awakened Last Jedi Rise of Skywalker like a one paragraph description but he read them and AI screenwriting is a huge topic right now because the Writers Guild of America is on strike and one of the things they want is for the studios to say that they definitely will not use AI now there are some news stories saying oh look the studio is using AI but it sounds more like they're looking into it than you actually using it. And I'm just going to cut to the chase. You have to be a terrible screenwriter to be threatened by AI. Because this shit is a worse writer than Beat Ayala. Like, it is awful. The paragraphs it came up with and the alternate titles, which were just kind of generic, it's like, the Force Unleashed. Okay, that was a video game. But mostly it was kind of original, mixed with some other things, mixed with early drafts of the sequels. But in a one paragraph form, they all sounded pretty cool. That being said, I can describe Rise of Skywalker to you in one paragraph and make it sound cool. What's happening is you're listening to just a short snippet of something, and then you're filling in stuff that you think would be cool but then the stuff that you added to it, you are crediting to the AI. Rob Liefeld used to do this all the time. He would introduce a character like Cable or Tyler, give them a cool design, but then not really tell you enough about them, but just enough that you would start making up your own lore and you would love that character because you basically co-created that character. Like Rob Liefeld, he's like, a badass warrior from the future, a badass warrior from the past, and a badass warrior from the present. And they might know each other. And you're like, oh my gosh! And you would just come up with whatever was most appealing to you. And then you would credit Rob with what you did. I mean, it was 90% you. So I had an artist send me an email a few days ago saying he wanted to work with me. And I liked his stuff. And then I kind of spent like a couple days saying, would he be good for this? Would he be good for that? But honestly, I have late books to get out. I have books that don't even have campaigns yet that some of them are half or all the way done. Like I can't really be green lighting any books right now. I got to see how everything shakes out for the rest of the year. But I wanted to work with them. And I said, hey man, sorry, I want to work with you, but I got no story ideas. And this always happens. Like a few hours later, I was like, hey man, I got a story idea for you. So I came up with this story called Touch Grass, but I had enough information to give to ChatGPT. I said, this is an eight page comic book script, average four to six panels per page. Write the script in the style of an exciting Marvel comic. And let me tell you, I went through like five drafts of this and they're all shit. So let's just run through all of the things about AI writing. Number one, it's lazy. It's only gonna give as much energy to something as you do. So if you give a brief, bland description, you will get a brief, bland script, even if it's longer because you asked it to expand upon your idea. So it's lazy. Number two, and this is probably the most crucial thing, it has no concept of timing, pacing, anything. So if you give it a plot summary that has 40 sentences in it, and it's eight pages, and you say average of four to six panels per page, it's gonna break down every single sentence into one panel. Even though some of the sentences clearly describe entire scenes, all it does is just give a little bit more information to your description. 
So the pacing of this is all fucking off. Let's not even get into how cheesy and generic. Its idea of what a comic book is your mom's idea of what a comic book is. The Midwest, home to a villain like no other. This devastation is a true masterpiece. Your reign of terror ends here, Blight. So I say, like, make the dialogue more subtle and thoughtful. Come up with a different name for the villain. That's what it was actually best at. But when I say, like, make it more subtle, it just spits out the same script. The Midwest, home to a villain who yearns for control. And it's, like, super freaking on the nose with the dialogue. This world will bend to my will. It's over, Terraformer. You're done. Now the good news is, it spits out these shitty scripts literally within seconds. So you're not wasting your time waiting for a script. You get it immediately, and it does follow your instructions, but I'll put it this way. It feels like malicious compliance. Malicious compliance is a term from mainly the military, but also business. It's the idea of your company commander tells you to attack to the west against the enemies, but he's been up for 40 hours, he's exhausted. The enemy is actually to the east, but he kept saying west. Now you know he meant east, but he said west, so you go attack to the west. That's an example of malicious compliance. And it feels like this. Like I will say like, give the lawyer more things to do and it will give her like one more line of dialogue. And these endings are shit. Wide shot of the sun setting over the city skyline, with Earth Shifter, Devil Dog, and Jennifer watching over it, ready to face whatever challenges come their way. Caption, together they'll forge a new path. Now, it was getting frustrating how bad this was, so I gave it a little bit of encouragement. I said, that was a lot better, the dialogue was much improved, but avoid overly dramatic declarative sentences or dialogue that sounds like exposition. Then I gave more detail about Devil Dog, more detail about his personality, his armor, things like this. And it didn't even seem like it was incremental improvements. It felt like each one was equally bad, just in a different way. So I kept trying and trying, giving it more and more information. Mind you, again, this is only an eight-page story. If you just don't look at your phone, don't get distracted by anything, you can write this in an hour. You can write the plot in an hour and the dialogue in another hour. So I've wasted 30 minutes, and I'm just getting back complete fucking dog shit. And then I was getting so frustrated, I was just like, rewrite it in the style of Anacenti, and it did not know what that was at all. Even though I've had it before, I found ChatGPT is good for, like, research on facts. So before I've said, like, tell me about Anacenti and her impact on the comic book industry. And it spit out a good but formulaic article, essentially. But when I told it to rewrite something in the style of Andesenti, no. <laughs> Earthshifter, your reign of chaos ends now. You see, that's the same from the previous. So finally, I just gave up. It's 30 minutes, it was an experiment. It was a failed experiment. So I ruined my TikTok experience, and I actually had to start again from square one. What happened is I had been on TikTok for about two years, and I was using the follow button when I should have been using the like button. So what happened was channels I actually liked were buried among literally like 2,000 other channels which were just channels that said like one thing funny once seven months ago. So I went back there and I unfollowed everything and just refollowed like 50 channels. But then it analyzes your behavior and says, oh, you like this type of humor, maybe you'll like this. So it's been showing me all these clips from Beetlejuice on Howard Stern in the 1990s. For people who don't know, Beetlejuice is this mentally handicapped guy. It sounds really mean that they were making fun of him, but in the context of the time, it was oddly friendly. So what they would do is they would set up different scenarios and ask Beetlejuice questions. And I mean, this guy, he can have a conversation, but it doesn't make much sense. But here's what he's good at, because he's a person. If you ask him a question, And you say, uh, what's the most money you've made in a year? He'll say, oh, I made about uh, $5,000. And you go, oh, $5,000? He goes, yeah, $5,000, like $2,000. And you go, oh, $2,000? He goes, yeah, like uh, $30,000. But the cadence of which he speaks sounds like a normal person. 
I think the funniest, but probably the meanest one, is they showed him stock footage of airplanes, and then they said that the pilot was about to crash, and they asked him to be an air traffic controller. Now, he said the wrong things, but he said it in the right tone with the right pacing. He's literally looking at stock footage of a Cessna on a television, and with absolute confidence, he goes, yeah, you're going to want to switch to 20,000. 20,000 feet? Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's clearly near the ground. He just knew that in a situation like this, you're supposed to speak in a calm, clear manner and give an instruction. He has no idea what instruction to give. He doesn't even know what the number 20,000 means. He doesn't know if 20,000 is more or less than 3,000. I think he knows it's a lot, but that's about as much as he knows. What I'm trying to say is you would have better luck having Beetlejuice from the Howard Stern Show write a script for you than AI. Because here's the other thing, and I've said this before, you can pay people to do almost anything, but you can't pay people to care. What I'm trying to say is in social interactions, Beetlejuice, despite his mental handicap, he's like everyone else. He wants to be accepted. He wants to be held in esteem. He wants to feel that he has provided value to a situation. For example, a theoretical pilot in a Cessna that's about to crash. Hey, go ahead and switch it to 20,000. 20,000 what? Now you can get an AI to analyze every script ever written, but you can't get it to care. I've talked about AI arts and initially I was very up on it and I would say now I'm very down on it, but I do believe in five to 10 years it will be a lot better. In fact, one of the things I like about AI art is the inhuman nature of it. It has no concept that humans should be laudable or beautiful or just not disgusting. So AI art tends to revert to portraying humans as monsters in a nightmare world, which I think the chaos of nature and human society would seem to be a nightmare to an algorithm. And I find AI art compelling in that regard. I do think AI art is going to get better. I don't believe that AI writing has the ability because so much of writing is literally connecting with another person, seeing their point of view, hearing an original point of view, and all you're going to get is regurgitation. So literally even just having the script broken down into panels, it's not worth it because the panels are just sentences of the summary with no concept of pacing. Some of these individual panels should be an entire page and some of the other panels, three of them could be put into one panel. Absolute irredeemable shit is how I would describe AI and I don't see hope for the future the way I do for visuals. Because I do see a weird kind of beauty in the visuals of AI art. It's monstrous, it's nightmarish, but it does actually seem original even though it is taking influences from multiple places. This just seems lazy. Like, ChatGPT writes like a diversity hire. It's treating this assignment like it's homework, like it's jury duty. And the results are awful. There's no humanity, there's no spark, there's nothing to be interested in here. There's not even like an original, weird, nightmarish quality. It's just boring and empty. But it was good at spitting out the odds of albinos in the general populace, 1 in 20,000. So before I go, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.